Welcome to Tactical Reviews and uh, I'm going to be tying a couple of lanyards onto these high knee special edition slip joints. We have a couple of different beads here, both also high knee exclusives. And I'm going to, although I sort of feel inclined to put titanium with the pen fold and the uh, cog bead with the CRKT, I want to swap them around and fit them the other way around. I'm going to start with the pen fold and cog bead and use the paracord that's been supplied with it. So I'm just going to untie that so that we can start the process. There's going to be two knots that I use. Uh, the snake knot and a what, what's called a, a lanyard knot um, we'll come on to in a, a second part so this is the highly supplied paracord doesn't look quite as long as I normally use when I'm starting to tie a lanyard so in fact the piece that I started the video with this is 60 centimeters because I like it to have room to work. So it looks like we've got only just 30 something, maybe 40 centimeters that's come with the cog bead. Let's just see how we managed to get on with that. Now, of course, with paracord, uh, we have melted ends to stop it fraying and coming apart and that might prove to be a little bit difficult to get through and it's bigger than that hole so I'm just going to set that aside and let's have a look at using the, the piece that I prepared where I've got the ends melted a little bit smaller And that also is going to have a problem. So for the pen fold, we're going to have to start with a with the raw ends of the paracord. So here we come back in with uh, it's another 60 centimetre piece of cord, uh, but with a raw end. So that's going to allow me to pass it through and uh, the lanyard part for the pen fold although it's quite tight. Clearly already the pen fold is a little bit awkward for fitting a paracord lanyard. So I don't want to just pull the middle pieces through, so I'm going to have to get a little tool to assist. So just using a little screwdriver bit that I can poke the uh, the cover through and try and hook it through. All of which is a little bit scary to do on your nice new shiny knife, but we have to make a little bit of effort to get this through. And there we go. So the braided cover, I'm going to want to pull tight and reset it as they move independently of the inner cords. And I want to 
and melt the end at least a little bit just to stop it shifting around too much. You're not going to be able to see the flame from this lighter as it's a blue flame in this lighting. be trimming the cord so I don't need to do too good a job with that at the moment and then the first thing we're going to do is just center this so as we start tying the knots we don't end up with a big discrepancy okay so the snake knot I'm going to try and talk this through, just going to run through the actual tying. doing is just a series of the same knot to build up part of the lanyard. Once I've done a couple more of the snake knot, uh, in order to tie the, the lanyard knot, which is a more complex knot, uh, I'm going to want to leave myself a reasonable amount of cord to work with. So I think I might actually stop at four at this point. Depending on the cord you have, how tightly you tie the knots and so on and how dexterous you are, you might be able to fit more in. If I weren't including a bead, I sometimes do a few more. Easier to tie and untie them. For this section of the video you might notice uh, there's a few bits of fast forwarding it's a lot more fiddly this knot uh, I'll try and show the process so that you could possibly follow along see why you need plenty of working rope for this. Once you've got the the knot itself is tied, but it needs working back. So all I want to do is have the bead held in position. So I'll just quickly spin the knot so you can see 
how that lanyard knot is a is a larger knot than the snake knot. So as you start to work it tighter, you get more spacing. So if you want to get it even neater, you need to work away at uh, pulling through that excess and working it around the knot and out into the loose ends. And there we go. So how you finish the other, the actual final ends is up to you. If you want to trim them shorter, you can melt them into the the knot and just have a, a knot at the end, or you can leave them loose. And there we have the penfold with a Rutetli cog bead, exclusive to Heine Haynes. Having just tied the lanyard and a bead for the Heine Penfold knife, now I'm going to do that with the CRKT Exclusive Edition Heine Pilar and a Heine Titanium bead. And starting here with a 60 centimeter length of paracord. The ends are already sealed on this. That's the minimum for tying this type of lanyard with a bead, uh, just because even even in this case, as you'll see, uh, you only just have enough uh, length to actually tie the final knot. So I start the tying process with a few snake knots. So first of all, we meet, need to make sure we get the cord centered. So we've got the same amount to work with both sides. to apply pressure along the cord and out to bring that knot in nice and tight. We want to get these nicely nestled against each other so we need to keep pressing towards the previous knot. So with my 60 centimeter minimum for the cord, I have four snake knots tied and still have this length of tail where I want to fit the bead and then tie a lanyard knot at the end of it. And even with this amount of cord, it is a bit of a struggle to get that last knot in place. And here we are now about to position the bead. Uh, there is only one way up nicely with this Heine titanium bead. H is the same way other, one, other way up. Some beads can be a little bit of a tight fit and we might need a little bit of an aid to help get the cord through. to this lanyard knot.
So I think what is obvious here, my hands having to be in the way slight part of the time, is it a, seems a bit of a tangle to tie this knot. And you may well not have been able to follow that. Uh, there's plenty of uh, guides and pictures if you need to see a step by step. I'm not going to steal someone else's. And uh, while I was tying that, my hands are probably in the way a lot of the time. Try to show you. You might be able to follow it through with me. But what you don't get from that static guide is then once you've got it together loosely, we want it to be tight into the bead to keep the bead nice, nice and securely in place and neat looking. So that requires quite a lot of fiddling of the cord through the knot. So I tighten it down, find the other part, tighten that down and then I work it through the knot. Quite often it is difficult to see where that uh, bit of cord is going. You need to get the, the tension the same both on both parts of the cord or the knot will be uneven. And of course this is why many people will buy lanyards. It's much easier to have someone else do the work for you. So I'll tidy up these loose these ends shortly, but there we go, basically. 60 centimeters of paracord into four snake knots, a bead and a lanyard knot. And the absolute minimum left over, only just possible to tie that knot in that way. Heine exclusive CRKT with Heine bead tied to a lanyard.